I'm Devanna Fletcher and welcome to Journey to the Magic, the podcast all about Disney holidays. I'm very excited about today's guest, actor, comedian, all-round legend, it's Ramesh Ranganathan. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm <laughs> good, how are you? Yeah, I feel you very... You can really then. What, yeah. what, what are we doing? No, yeah, I just feel... It's good. I yeah. feel like proper Disney. It's a very happy space for you to be sitting in, Ramesh. Yeah, my problem is I've got indifferent face. And okay. I, I, I look very kind of unimpressed with everything. Okay. And so I'm concerned that I'm, I'm basically ruining the vibe. <laughs> but I'm going to try and be sort of upbeat and stuff like that. Okay, you know I mean? so a different version of Ramesh today. Yeah, I'll be a version of myself today that if I was to continue that in my comedy career, would be the end. <laughs> Do you know what I, mean? I, I often wonder if, if I ever achieve contentment, would okay. I have to retire? Oh, wow. Mm. Okay. It's, a, it's the ongoing dilemma for the comedian. Right. If you're not disgruntled anymore, what do you talk about? Nobody was here at all, Sherry. You go, aren't oh, things great? Have you noticed this? It's wicked, isn't it? <laughs> Is anyone else really happy? That's the thing. So you've kind of got to look at life in a way that you find those little bits that are annoying well, or I funny or humorous. Well, you're trying to look for things that are different. You're, mm. you're trying to find a different way. The whole idea is you're trying to look at something in a way that a punter wouldn't. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So you're trying to find a different angle. So every single time you're looking for something different, do you know what I mean? But I mean, my, my, I'm a very cynical comedian. So if I stopped being cynical, I don't know what happens. I, I, I genuinely don't know what happens. <laughs> So, yeah. we'll see. Let's see. When this goes <laughs> out, it might be, it might be the end. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry, but also very happy for yeah. you at the same time. I'm happy too. <laughs> oh no, it's already started. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go straight in with holidays. When was your last holiday and where did you go to? Uh, my last holiday uh, was, well, actually it was a UK, UK holiday. I, nice little staycation. Yeah, is it a staycation? Because... So, oh, sorry, I, I don't <laughs> go, mean to, go for it. Go. Well, it's just I talked about staycations on this show that I did recently. Yeah. And somebody said to me, um, "You know, that's not actually staycation." I said, "What do you mean? Because staycation is when you holiday in the UK, is what yeah. I thought. Apparently, yeah. it's not. What? Did, what? To stay at home then? Yeah, that's staycation. So staycation is when you actually remain within the confines of your house. Well, yeah. Which to me, to I to would call that then. prison simulation myself. <laughs> But that's what a staycation is. Okay. It? Apparently. But yes, I did a staycation in the more common parlance <laughs> of, of, of non pedants. In the UK. Uh, we went to a hotel, like a, a luxe hotel. Very nice. Yeah, it was very nice. I would say too nice for us, uh, to be honest with you. Like, because did you go with the kids? Went with Because you've got uh, my three, wife and three kids. boys. We've got three yeah. boys, yeah, 13, right. 11, and nine. And we stayed in this like sort of tree house. It was really nice. Yeah. It's like we were there for like three nights. It's really nice. I found the restaurant intimidating. Okay. Because like there's somebody waiting for you there. They know your name when you arrive. You sit down, it's very sedate, very quiet. And this is the second time we've been to that hotel. The first time we went to the hotel, we enjoyed the room and then went down to dinner and sat down. And I looked around and I said to Lisa, this is too nice for us. <laughs> So we left and went to the pub <laughs> because I felt so intimidated Right. because it felt so nice. And I looked at my kids and I'm going to be honest with you, my attitude towards uh, children is they shouldn't be quiet. You know, no, like, I, yeah, I, 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 like, I, I want the kids to just be how they are. Do mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Free range, if you will. <laughs> and so I don't like this whole idea of making them be quiet for the environment. And yeah. so when we sat in the restaurant, I mean, people, <laughs> people would just be going, oh, I can't wait to be at a restaurant next to your lot. <laughs> but um, this time, I had, we had a conversation with the kids and we said, we're going to quite a sedate restaurant. Do you feel like you can handle this? And they said, yes, we can handle this. And so they were good. They were really they great. Did? Well, we felt comfortable. It was good. It was really nice. You were just yeah. sat and talked at a reasonable level the whole time. We sat and had a conversation. Time. Yeah. It was nice. Talked about life. You know, got <laughs> into a little go. bit of philosophy, stuff like that. It was really nice. Talked oh. about the Disney holiday we've got coming up, all that. So it was great. It was really good. Oh, we're going to be it. talking a lot about that today. Mm. Um, what do you look for in the perfect holiday? Are you someone who needs a beach and for everything to be chilled, somewhere cold? Well, I'm in a weird, a very privileged situation where I do a lot of travel shows. So I yeah. sort of do see lots of different types of things. Like, you know, I've been to Sahara, the Sahara. I've been to the Arctic. You know, so you have all these different like kind of experience holidays. And also I'm very much all or nothing in terms of the pace at which I do things. So when I'm working, I go full tilt. When I'm not working, I essentially shut down. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I don't want to do anything at all. Right. 
So my like the holidays I kind of um, am after are just to sit down and not do anything. So like typically we look for something where we, we're staying somewhere nice so that yeah. if we decide not to go anywhere for the day, it's cool just to be there. I would say I always want a beach holiday or like, you know, normally we always go for a beach holiday. But if I go into the water and I feel something brushed by my calf, right. the sea is off limits to me for the next three <laughs> days. That's how long it normally takes me to recover. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a bit of a mix really. Because obviously with three boys, I don't want them to be bored. Yeah. So we're always looking for somewhere where you can have a chill out if you want. And my wife and I can just do nothing but also that there's activities and stuff for the boys. Do you know what I mean? So we always kind of pick somewhere where it's quite chilled out, but just down the road is loads of stuff to do. That's you know, good. Because they, as you know, having three kids, mm -hmm. so, like when you, if, if you're trying to relax with three kids that are just itching to get out, it isn't relaxing anymore. It's, uh, it feels like you've got three really angry prisoners. Do you think the family, because you go off and you do all these like cool things, do you think that they want to, go on those sort of adventures or are they kind of... Well, they don't want to do any of the cool things uh, I've done because they never watch any of it. So they've got no <laughs> idea what I have done. Keeps you grounded. Their, their interest in watching anything with me in is zero. So, um, but we do try and like, we'll, ha we'll sit down and go, right, what do we want to do this year? Do you know what I mean? And like holidays are really important to us because... You know, with three boys, like Lisa's constantly running around to clubs and stuff like that, and it's full on, and I'm away a lot, so she sort of bears the brunt of that. Do you know what I mean? Do like, you plan a long time in advance? Like I've, I've spoken to people over the years who, so for next year, they already have that in because otherwise, life goes like work happens, opportunities pop up, and that time gets snatched yeah, away. Our rule is we've always got something booked in ahead to look forward to because like, yeah. so, so sometimes when you're like really under the cosh. It's nice to know that you're walk, you're you're heading towards this finishing line or whatever. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And having a break. What I would say, if I'm being absolutely honest, you can be honest, is that we'll book something, and then as soon as we booked it, I I think that's done. Well, obviously, that's not how holiday works. You have to book the details and what you're actually going to do, and maybe yeah. accommodation and stuff like that. Uh -huh. Whereas I think we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that now. That job's done, and then it comes around. And I'm like, oh wow. We might have to stay at the airport. You know, I, I don't, I, you know, I need to think. So what of, have you booked by that point then? You've literally just written in the diary, we'll go on holiday here. Yeah, and I like, I might have booked the flights and then like whittled it down to like three options that we're going to stay at. And then often I'll go, Lisa will go to me, have you sorted out? Have you sorted out? And I go, yeah, because in my head I have. Yeah. And then it'll get closer and I'll go, oh my God. I mean, like last year, man, we went to Portugal and I, like, I haven't ever told Lisa this. I nearly lost the villa because I left it so late. Because like I, I said to them, like, we stayed there, we've stayed there every year for the last few years. And then I just assumed it was locked in. And I said, yeah, yeah, we're probably going to stay there. But I never, like, paid anything or, 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 or confirmed it. And then it got to, like, really close. Yeah. And they said, we're about to give this away. And so I, it happened, like, Lisa was, I was in the eye line of Lisa and I was just at my laptop <laughs> pretending not to have a panic attack. Please, can we lock this in? I'm going to pay it right now. Why are you getting your card out, Rom? No reason. Stop asking all the questions. <laughs> it was all right in the end. But I'm, re I'm really bad for that. I'm really disorganised. Like, re I'm sort of, yeah, too relaxed. I okay, so you plan to a certain extent in, in terms of it, it's kind of there but then nothing. Yeah, I mean, Lisa's, my wife's much better at that kind of detail stuff. Do you two go on holiday, just you two? Not really. No. Uh, um, I personally, I think Lisa feels the same. I don't have the urge to go on holiday without them. It's yeah. not like a, an itch I need to scratch. To and go also, on you're getting a little kids. bit closer to them, possibly like not wanting to go on holiday with you. Correct. Exactly. I mean, the eldest one, I reckon we've got two years left. <gasps> oh, God. I think he's 13. Right. And for the last few years, I've, I always take the whole of August off mm. to go away. Yeah. So this year, we're talking about, like, I've taken the whole of August off. And then I said to him, well, we're thinking about going away for the whole time. And he went, are you? Because <laughs> he wants to hang out with his mates. Yeah. So now we're like shortening it so that we can do both. So that Aww. we're going to go away for a couple of weeks, but then he's going to hang out with his crew or whatever it is. <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> can you remember your first ever holiday? Well, my first ever holiday was to Sri Lanka, which is where my family are from. And um, my mum's from like a tiny village and we just sort of relaxed and had a nice time. But it was really interesting to see this, the background of this woman that I only know from Crawley. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I only knew British mum. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, and so going back to her village and like 
seeing what she was all about. And um, also, me and my brother became like an exhibit <laughs> because all of the people in the village wanted to hear English being spoken by English people. <laughs> so they'd like come and they'd go to me like... Um, uh, you have a nice T-shirt on, and I say, yeah. Uh, my mum bought it for me. And then they go, my mum bought it for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was like I was doing impromptu English classes. <laughs> and the big problem for me is I don't speak Tamil, right? Because when I was growing up, my mum and dad were so worried about about me fitting in, and then what? I don't know. They had this bizarre idea that I would have an accent if I spoke both languages. Well, that's interesting. But, I guess though, when you don't know. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. But then it's this weird combination of my mum not wanting to speak Tamil to me, so that I spoke like proper English, but then now being angry with me that I don't speak Tamil. <laughs> it's such a weird thing. But um, but what that meant was I couldn't really interact with anybody there yeah. fully. And then like you sort of go, "This is your uncle," uh, and then you go, "Hello," and then go, "Hello." You're, really okay. awkward, does And then it? you go, uh, yeah, um, tea, <laughs> <laughs> food, food. Oh, it's awful. Do you know any of any? I, like, so, like, my mum and dad spoke it a lot around me, so I do sort of understand Because it. they would speak it together, right? Or yeah. were they trying to just speak no, English No, they were other? trying to speak English around us, but then when they argued, they'd flip no, back. Yeah. And that happened, talking about happened a lot. <laughs> so, so we heard it a lot. So I do sort of understand it. Yeah. But, you know, I can't I can't really speak it. What's been your favourite trip you've ever been on? Because you've been on so many now. It must be hard to distinguish, like, work-wise, family-wise, friendship-wise. There's yeah. so many different things to choose from. Yeah. Um, I've really fallen in love with um, going away with my family. Like, for the last few years, I've... We've spent like four weeks in Portugal during the summer, which is like incredibly, like I feel incredibly privileged to be able to do that. So being away for a bit longer is really, really nice. And will you not look at work emails or try not to think about work at all while you're away? Well, it's, it's a very, it's, that is a great question, by the way, mm, because the year before last, I did do exactly that. And then what I would do is on, God, this is, I've gone, I'm going into too much detail, but I've committed I, to this. I like it. You've on committed. a Tuesday morning, I'd allocate two hours. Right. So, like, looking at emails and stuff like that. Yeah. But outside of that, I wouldn't look at anything. Whereas this year, I didn't do that, and it was a mistake. Like, so you didn't do that as in you didn't have that two-hour window, and you... I did have the two... But I just was, like, looking all the, all time. the time. Not all the time, but, like... If but something enough for it to yeah. be there and yeah. in your brain. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's bad. I think mm -hmm. you need to just completely shut that off and go, I'm I'm out of, I'm off comms. You must have loads of um, like funny or embarrassing stories as well from your travels. I wouldn't say this is embarrassing. I had, I had a terrifying experience where I, I would say I became more panicked than I needed to. Basically, we're in the Arctic. First thing I would say is I'm a vegan, right? And and I know people say that vegans bang on about it a lot, but I obviously didn't bang on about it enough because we went to the Arctic and we were four hours away from civilization and somehow the message hadn't got across that I was vegan. So we didn't <laughs> we didn't have any vegan food. So I basically lived off cucumber rolls. But that wasn't that wasn't the story. The yeah. story is we were looking for polar bears and uh while I um we were just hunt, not hunting. We weren't hunting. We were looking around to see no, a polar bear. That's not very bear. vegan. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, <laughs> that actually sits quite in opposition to my views. But we're like wandering around looking for a polar bear, and we're just on these skidoos, like in the middle of nowhere. It's incredible, right? And um, we see a polar bear, right? And the rule is, if you're in the path of a polar bear, no matter how far away it is, if it's in your sight you have to get out of the way of the polar bear because as soon as the polar bear sees you, it will start heading towards you and like start charging you. And if it charges you... But how do you know you're getting out of its way? I guess if its nose is pointing at you, <laughs> you're in its way. But can it not just veer towards you? Yeah, but it's like... I, I don't, but it's a great question that I didn't ask at the time. <laughs> I but think like, you should it, have been it, more panicked so you're going to tell me you are. If, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if, you, if you feel like you're in the path of it, like even if it's like miles away, yeah. you have to move it off into a different trajectory. That's the rule, right? Okay. So we saw this polar bear like walking across in front of us and it was absolutely amazing. And I'm just like, I started giggling. Just like, <laughs> like we're, being, we're filming it. Now I can't watch that show because of my reaction. So right. It was embarrassing. Anyway, we so we saw the polar bear and then um, it was great. And then we went off and we started to, like the guy that was with me, this um, the tour guide guy. He wanted to just sit and like try and listen for narwhals. So we dropped this like microphone into the water and we were like listening. We had headphones on and we we're like listening out for them. And then we looked to the left. Oh no! 
and the polar bear, it was really far away, but it was heading towards us, right? So we were like, okay, we've got to move. So we all get up, get in the skidoos, and we head off, right? And then we go and set up somewhere else to do some more filming. And we sat there filming for a bit, and then we look to the left, <laughs> and it's the same guy heading towards us. So we pack our stuff up. This happened four times, right? Eventually, somebody goes, I think he can smell the food. And so it was following us. <laughs> and then I panicked. Right? <laughs> You're supposed to remain calm. Let's get out of here, guys. Let's get out of here. I was on the skidoo before anybody else. That like, Rom, you got to stay. The whole thing is you got to stay calm. I can't, the, the polar, we're being followed by a polar bear. Let's go, guys. Let's go. It was so bad. Like. And was this filmed? That bit wasn't filmed. Okay. Because like they, as soon as we saw it, it just like packed up. Thank God. If it had been filmed, I would have asked to destroy the rushes. I well, I mean, it goes back to my point of how do you get out of the path of a polar bear? I think they don't you get just, away from the pole. They're not crabs just going sideways. No, you're absolutely anywhere. right. They do. I mean, it's like that works if polar bears can't turn corners. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That strategy. Yeah. Yeah. But, so um, when you go back, I would, I would query this. Yeah, I will ask. I will say. I will Good. Say. Thank you for that tip. I wish I'd had you with me at that time. <laughs> I would have asked that question directly. Is there anything that you feel like you have to uh, like you have to travel with? Anything that you always put in your suitcase? Yeah, I always put um, cereal bars or like snack bars in my suitcase. Like loads of them. Is that also going back to being vegan? Is that also because you don't know what is going to be available when you're travelling around? Because some yeah. countries simply don't get it. Yeah, correct. I mean, like, you, I, I feel like if you're vegan and you're going to certain places, I think it's a bit off key to sort of go, what are the vegan options? Because some places just culturally. Yeah, so, what that, do you do when you're traveling around then? I normally like, you know, for example, we went to Mongolia. Yeah. And they, you know, you go and ask them what's for dinner and there's like a sheep in a pot. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, you can't go, what are the vegan options? Yeah. So, I took like freeze, I took camping meals. Really? You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just like poured some hot water in that probably had been used for the sheep. But. Uh, and then you, and then, yeah, I'll just do that. Because I just think you can't go and, you know, veganism is such a, well, first of all, it's a bit of a privileged thing. And it's and it's also not all cultures. Well, and you're going into places like that where they are giving you that. that exactly. Yeah. You're being hosted. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I think it's a bit off. So, so yeah, we normally, but but the truth is I sort of get hangry. Do so you? I need to be near sustenance at all times. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So I think that's very... Sometimes very just having a bar in your pocket can just ease ease. Correct. The, and right. then the other thing is, and this might be a surprising one, I have to have decent moisturiser. Really? Face moisturiser? Everything. Okay. Everywhere. All okay. over. I apply two coats daily. <laughs> wow. Top to tail. The same moisturiser everywhere or different... No, so one for the face, right? And then I'll probably use a beard oil, okay? Uh, and then another one for the body. Wow! Yeah. Okay. Because I I dry out. Do you? Yeah. It's, it's probably all the travelling. It probably is, but sometimes in the past I've put on a pair of shorts, and then I think, why are there crocodile legs sticking out the bottom of these shorts? <laughs> and it's where just all my skin's got all ashy. <laughs> so now I've realised I need to apply. So in the morning, first thing, yeah, I'll like have a wash. <laughs> Um, and then I'll fully coat myself. Yeah. Some sort of some sort of cocoa butter based nice. body moisturizer. Okay. Then I'll go for something different for the face. Mm -hmm. And then normally kind of a vanilla or oud oil for the beard. Nice. And by that really point, everything's soaked in, so you start again with the body. Correct. The yeah. yeah correct. Okay. Yeah. And then sometimes I might apply a midday coat, depending on what the day, what wow. the day entails. Do you know what I mean? Every time I see you on TV from now on, I'm going to go. There's a nicely moisturised man. I'm fully varnished at all times. <laughs> Let me tell you that for nothing. <laughs> um, I didn't know you were an ex-teacher. Yeah, a maths teacher. So you, you've travelled with kids, surely, on school trips, or did you just avoid those? No, I did it all the time. I, did, I, like, I, I was head of sixth form. But when we used to go on the school trips, I like, so because I was so disorganised, I wouldn't listen to any of the instructions. Or I wouldn't... Fo so sometimes kids would go to me, what time are we supposed to be meeting at Thing In? I thought, I don't know. <laughs> And then a couple of times I just make up times. There's a couple of times where, like, they'd be at a meeting point and they'd have to wait 20 minutes for me and every kid I'd spoken to about what time we had to meet up. You'd like, you'd always know the kids that Romesh that had asked Romesh what time the meeting was because they'd all arrive at the same time. And eventually, there's like the teacher running the trip was just like, mate, just say nothing. Yeah. Just please, it's better for you to say I don't know than tell children abroad the wrong time to meet up. And then I remember one night we were, we were in, um, we were in Rome actually, and we went to a pizza place, 
and we're having a nice time. Mm. And it was like near the end of the trip and like towards the, towards the end of the trip, everyone's getting a bit relaxed. It's gone well. Do you know what I mean? And I became conscious that I'd drunk too much wine. Oh, no. But I wasn't battered, but I was like tipsy. And so, but then I was tipsy and a st- member of staff on a school trip. <laughs> and then we're just walking around Rome and kids were talking to me. And you know when you overcompensate? <laughs> I just stopped being needlessly wordy and stuff like, well, that is a very interesting question, yes. Maybe we should look and try and find the answer together. Uh, Mr Hopkins, Mr Hopkins, (laughs) Stephen has an interesting inquiry vis-a-vis the architecture of this particular part part of... It was just really bad. I was just so paranoid. How did it feel when you woke up the next day? (laughs) The fear. (laughs) The fear was unreal. Did anyone say anything? No. I bet the kids loved it. Um... Do you have any travel superstitions before we start talking Disney holidays? Do you have any travel superstitions? Like, are you a can't sit on the 13th row of a plane person? You know, anything like that? I, regardless of where I am in my reading, have to buy a book before I get on any plane. Have to. Really? I might not even look at it. I, I just have to. It's like Do you a, go for a particular genre when you're buying your books? You know, like airport? trashy kind of crime stuff. Uh-huh. Where it's like, four couples went away on holiday. One of them went missing. Which one of them is responsible? <laughs> Find out in this twisty and turny page turner from blah, blah, blah. So it's always one of those. Do you okay, know what I mean? yeah. Um, and then the other thing is I have to go to the toilet the latest possible potentially plane delaying moment before I get on the plane. Before you even get on? Correct. So you're not even waiting? Okay. So like if they're queuing up, I have to wait to the, to the very last second before I get on the plane. That's like my thing. Just be able to go to the loo with a bit more space rather than in the little... Well, I don't know why. I've got no problem with plane toilets. I've got yeah. no issue with them. I don't, I've never sat in one thinking this could be roomier. I, I'm, fully aware, <laughs> I'm fully aware of the, the constraints of, yeah. of plane bathrooms and what mm-hmm. that has to be. But for some reason, I don't... Do you know what it is? I'm deeply paranoid about that 20 minutes that you can't go. Yeah. You know where you sit down and then they do the safety thing yeah. and then the light's on and all of that. I, for some reason, I think my bladder's going to go, we've got to go now, man. <laughs> we've got to go now. We can't wait for that light to go off, bro. Let's go now. So I have to go right at the latest, last minute. Um, so let's talk Disney. Yeah. Um, how much of a Disney fan are you? And we can incorporate Marvel and Star Wars in this too because, you mm. know... They've got the lot now. I have grown up being a huge... I'm a huge Disney fan. Mm. Like um, like the films, the cartoons, everything is like part of my childhood. Yeah. And I'm obsessed with it. And my kids are now as well. This is how much of a fan... Like, so I, I, I become deeply, deeply obsessed with the films, right? Because yeah. I feel like they're so kind of immersive. So Lion King is one of my favourite movies of all time. Right, right? okay. When I first watched The Lion King at the cinema, I went through a period of being upset that I didn't live in that world. It's so, like I just sort of wanted to hang out with Timon and Pumbaa. And like, yeah. obviously, like for normal people, they watch that and they go, oh, that was a nice film. But I left sort of being sad, like I mourned. The not- friends that you never had. Yeah. 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 Is oh. that sad? No, it's, it's really cute. <laughs> really cute. Who's your favourite character then? Well, I love Timon and Pumbaa. I, I, okay. I, like, Timon and Pumbaa, like, for me, that's a comedy double act. That's, I, Rob Beckett and I model ourselves on Timon and Pumbaa. I can see it now. Yeah, yeah. that's the dynamic, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I'm obsessed with all those films. But obviously, Star Wars and Marvel, mm. like, I'm such a comic book geek. Like, every time a new Marvel film comes out, it's a family event. I mean, my wife is begrudging. So I read all the comic books... I, re, I go to watch all the films. I'm obsessed with the whole putting together the world of it. My kids and I regularly rank the films and really? like discuss the relative merits of them and talk about which one from each series we think we talk is the best. We constantly have debates about who we think the best character is. Like I'm currently a massive Thor. I think Thor's my favourite at the moment, but that will change on a week-to-week basis. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So, um, and then Star Wars, obviously. Star Wars is my life. Really? Yeah. That's another one where I just wished I lived in that that world. Do you know what I mean, obviously, you know, you're dealing with the regime of an oppressive empire, but all of that. <laughs> but the silver lining. All of that in mind. But the silver lining is you might get to hold a lightsaber. Yeah. You know, and I, I like when Phantom Menace first came out. I went to the cinema four times to watch it over and over again, just to sort of get my proper opinion on it. Yeah. And then I went to watch Force Awakens, and I was sat with my oldest son. 
and he loved it. Like it was his first kind of proper. Ex- it's really weird actually because the children became into the mythology of Star Wars mm. before they really started watching any of the stuff. You know, so they were aware of Darth Vader, they were aware of lightsabers, Luke Skywalker, all of, all of that stuff. They were all into that before they really knew what the story yeah. was or anything like that. So then when I took my son to watch Force Awakens and he was like really obsessed, it was so pathetic. I was like, listen, I have got so much to show you, son. <laughs> and, like, and I started debating what order to show him the films in and stuff like that. And then we went to watch Rogue One. Like, I don't know. It's just like, like being, it's so exciting to have something that was so much a part of your childhood yeah. and then have your children see your children get into it. I think it's like a really, it's an incredible experience. You know, see, I really love that. we have that at the moment with Star Wars. So I had never seen any Star Wars right. before. Um, uh, Tom sat me down and like made me watch the first three and blah, blah. Uh, but our kids absolutely are obsessed. And they've got all of Tom's, so Tom's cousins who are older than him gave him all the Star Wars toys that right, were right, theirs. Right. And now our kids play with all of those Star Wars toys. Yeah. So they're really, really old. And we just keep adding to the collection. Uh, and it's, I, I think it's a lovely thing to have that that topic and that world that you all can bond over. In, in yeah, a, you know. totally. And like, so for example, Mandalorian, mm. whenever that comes out, that my my oldest son and I are not allowed to watch that separately. Like, that is our yeah. appointment to view, do you know what I mean? So it's a thing that we'll always watch together. And also, it's that thing of watching something that you're both enjoying. You know, so many times when you're doing stuff, one of you's making a compromise, do you yeah. know what I mean? But with that, it's like a really cool thing to be able to sort of And are the younger two in it, into it now as well? They're, they're not as... They are really into it, but they don't know enough to get into a proper yeah, debate, yeah, okay. do you know what I mean? Like okay. these kids, you know... They not to, debating, they just waving to, lightsabers around. Yeah, look, they're into it. They yeah. enjoy it, but they can't get into heavy discussion, okay. you know, and, and that's not their fault. They're children. Heavy discussions about <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> Um, let's talk Disney Park experience because you have had a Disney Park experience. You've been to Disneyland Paris. Yeah, we'd always talked about going to Disney, but it's that thing of like debating about when what age your kids should be to go. So one year I said we're going to go to Disneyland Paris and um, the kids were like absolutely buzzing. So I booked it to be right at the door of the park. Right. And then I booked, you know, the room that we booked was like this super experience where like every day they hide chocolates in the room and stuff like that and like the kids do a little hunt when they come in and I didn't know anything about I, I so I obviously I'm, I'm a Disney fan but didn't know what it was like to, I'd heard stories about what it's like to visit a Disney park but I didn't know what it was like and so I turned up to the hotel and somebody came over and said oh yeah can we help you and then he said what which room are you in and what blah 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 and I told him and then he went and then he, honestly this is what happened he went <gasps> you are about to have the most magical experience of your life. <laughs> I was like, oh my days, what is this, man? And then, um, yeah, it was like an, it was, it was an amazing time. Like, the Ratatouille ride was like a game changer oh, so for much us. so fun. I'd never been on a ride like that before. Like, because, right. you know, before that, you'd been on roller coasters, and I love roller coasters, but the Ratatouille ride, like that whole thing of being in the, like, it was just... Being shrunk down and yeah. going and then like the you're running through the kitchen yeah. and like and the it, heat bit yeah. that gets me every just time just mad and I was like and I came out and I was like a bit like because I'm I've got to be honest with you I, I am not one who likes showing that they're impressed by anything <laughs> it's sort okay. of what, it's not my natural thing <laughs> yeah but I came out just like that was incredible wasn't it like it just felt like you really were Remy do you know what I mean like it was oh, it's tragic but um <laughs> but I really I, I really loved it all and then also. The, the the kids' obsession with getting autographs from the various Disney characters. It, it was they they were really into it. Yeah. Like really into it. Like really into it. Like to the point where they would delay going to rides to go and like I, I need to get this signed. Go two days ago, you didn't even know this was a thing. <laughs> and now it's become your life's ambition. Um but the biggest thing for me, to be honest with you. The thing that I will take with take away with me from that trip, like we had an incredible time. All the rides were great, wandering around. Oh, also for a Star Wars geek, mm. there's this bit that you go into where you can just design and put together your own lightsaber. Yeah, I nearly got divorced that day. Why? Because me and the kids, <laughs> we spent so long trying to figure out what we want. <laughs> It's like, what colour should we go for? And what's like, what type of handle do you want? Well, I kind of like the weight of this one. I feel like if I got into just really... So I felt like my wife was sort of looking at me like going, you've got about 20 minutes left of me still being attracted to you. 
Do you know what I mean? He gives them wisely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the the most the, the 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 most incredible thing is like watching the, the fireworks. Yeah. Like that thing is such a it's such a famous thing to go. You know, everybody knows that's the thing you do. Yeah. And so I was like, you know, I was like, oh, should we go see that tonight? And so we're there. And then watching the kids just like watch it, it was like amazing, man. Do you know what I mean? And and because you are someone who looks at life professionally mm-hmm. in a in a more cynical way. Yeah. Like, do you like what is it like then when that kind of keep like comes flooding in? Uh, it's frightening. <laughs> what is this happiness? What is this feeling? I'm feeling I'm sort sick. of like this is like warm. Lisa, what's this warm thing that's happening in my chest? Oh, that's joy, Ramesh. You try and push it away normally. Um, no, no. I mean, like that that sort of thing. I think like when you're somewhere with your kids, yeah. like you just you you just sort of embrace. It's a it's a weird thing, like. Because I was geeking out as well. Because I'm so into like Marvel and Star yeah. Wars as well as the traditional Disney stuff. I'm sort of geeking out and enjoying it myself. But I think you do vicariously watch your kids enjoy that, and it feels great, man. It's really good. Yeah. We did that Tower of Terror. How and, was that experience? Um, you obviously, got the height restriction on it. Yeah. So my second son was just about tall enough to go on it, right? So we get on the ride. <laughs> And I didn't know what it, I didn't know, I mean, I knew, I had an idea, but I didn't really know what Who it was. Who were the people screaming outside? Well, I just thought, you know, so many times you see a ride and people scream yeah. and then you get on it and you go, okay, they're just screaming mm-hmm. to, God, what, I sound like such a killjoy. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand why they were screaming, actually. It's very on brand, of, I wouldn't worry about it. The level of fear <laughs> wasn't actually in keeping with the amount of noise that was being made. But, you know, you sort of go, this will probably be all right. And then we got on the ride, and the f- I think it's like the first drop. I like went Whoa! like really like panicked, <laughs> and then you start looking across at your son, and he's just like loving it. He's loving it. And then we get down to the bottom. Lisa was waiting outside, and she's like, "Because well, our youngest son wasn't tall enough to go on." Yeah. And she goes, "How was it?" And I go, oh, "I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he's going to be all right. Can we, uh, we, go, we need to go straight back." <laughs> and then in the end, I started going. I think for your sake, we need to chill it out a bit. But really, I was like. <laughs> I've done this enough times now. Um, so you are going to Walt Disney World for the first time ever Correct. this year. How are you feeling about this impending joy that's about to enter your life? Oh, I'm very excited about it. We're going for two weeks. Amazing. There's a lot of pressure on it. There is. You know, to make every day count. Yeah. But you've already had like a little bit of um, Walt Disney World interaction. You've had to phone up and speak to some someone on the phone. Well, listen, I'd forgotten about a payment deadline. And so uh, I had to phone up and get that sorted out. That was a bit of panic. Yeah. She said, when are you going? I said, I gave the date. And then she goes, you are going to have such a magical time. I'm so excited for you. Enjoy every day that you plan for your wonderful holiday. I was like, oh, my goodness. (laughs) That is the nicest I have been spoken to in, I would say, a decade. (laughs) Just felt so lovely. She goes, you are going to have an incredible time. So what's going on here, man? And you're phoning to pay a payment that you've forgotten to... I was like, incre- <laughs> listen, I was, incred- I was incredibly stressed. Yeah. And by the end of it, I wanted to miss another deadline just so I could speak to her again. <laughs> we had such a great time on the phone. I can't remember her name, but if you're out there, please reach out on Instagram or whatever. I'd love to... I just, you just seem like a nice person. I love this. I love this a lot. Um, so this part of the podcast, we usually plan your dream Disney day. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you're, you're a bit of a planner, but not much of a planner. So Correct. I thought what we would do is we would look ahead to your Walt Disney World trip and talk through some of the things that you might like to do while you're there. Okay. Uh, so there are 29 hotels on site. Uh, all varying in themes. We're going to talk through every single one. We're not, we're not. Uh, but they're all varying in themes, like what you can see, like for instance, the contemporary, you can see all the fireworks from the contemporary. Okay. The Grand Floridian, you go around the monorail, you're right next to the Magic Kingdom. Um, or somewhere like Yacht and Beach Club where you can walk to Epcot, you can get, you can walk to Hollywood Studios, you can get the boat. Uh, you can basically travel around everywhere. Have you already got a hotel that you would quite like to stay at? We're going Yacht Club, I think. You're going there. Yeah. Uh, that's one that I've actually looked at quite a lot because you can walk to Epcot. That's, it's that's a longer what... walk to Hollywood Studios, but but it's only 15 minutes. You can do that. Easily. Yeah. Well, that's the reason that we chose that. We're, really? We're thinking about that just because of the walk. To... I already feel like Hollywood Studios is going to be your favourite park. Do you reckon? Well, because it's got um, Galaxy's Edge. It's got Star Wars. <sighs> <sighs> I just... I don't even know how I'm going to react, man. <laughs> like, I'm actually going to be in Star Wars. You actually are. Yeah. It'd yeah. be better than being cast in a Star Wars film because, like, 
then you have to do stuff. Whereas yeah. I'm just going to be wandering around, just fist bumping a stormtrooper or something like that. I cannot believe it. I've got to say, so when we go, because our kids are obsessed, uh, we've spent quite a lot of time at Galaxy's Edge and the the characters that go around, the amount of attention and time they've given the kids always blows my mind away. Mm. And you don't realise it until you've filmed the, the encounter and then afterwards gone, oh my God, they've been talking to them for seven minutes. Yeah. For, and it's so magical and personal. And you just think, oh, I, I hope you remember that forever. Yeah. Because that's so... Yeah, but I don't care about their conversations. I'm there. <laughs> that, listen, listen, that is that's primarily for me. If they, good. Listen, if they have a good time, good. I'm happy for you. Mm-hmm. But I'm the Star Wars fan. It's when you see st- two stormtroopers start walking towards you and you've got a moment where you're like, are they going to come over to me? Are they going to come over yeah. to me? Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> and no, our kids get ready either. now. And yeah. our kids like, start like looking like they're going to have a fight with them. They don't. But it's all very exciting. Um, I think, yeah, I f- that'll be... Yeah, I'm excited about that. Very excited about that. Good. Uh, so we're going to wake up in your hotel, in the Yacht Club. Yeah. Um, and uh, we should probably start by having breakfast. Okay. Vegan-wise, I've got to say, first of all, loads of vegan options around the I thought the you were about to go, first of all, bring your snack bars. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, and the great thing is, is that um, there's little green leaves everywhere that you can see where um, the vegan options are. Oh, right. I thought you were suggesting I eat that. Just, there's, just, there's, just there's like leaves around the park that you can the, just sort of, yeah, like, a, like a wandering giraffe, exactly. just sort of help yourself to whatever exactly. you want. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but uh, a good breakfast recommendation is a Hana. Okay. Over in the Polynesian. Um, and over there, you're going to get a vegan skillet, uh, which features vegan just egg, vegan beyond sausages, and breakfast potatoes. A nice hearty start. To that sounds day. good. I'm going to have that. Yeah. Ohana. Okay. Ohana. Yeah. Ohana. Okay. Ohana. Okay. I'll get one of them. It's very, very good. Mm. Um, and you can also get Mickey and Stitch waffles. Okay. Uh, so the first thing I think we should do, the first park, has got to be Hollywood Studios. Yeah. And we're going to go straight to Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. You've got Smuggler's Run and Rise of the Resistance. Should I dress up for that, do you think? I would say yes, because right. also when you're there, you've got people walking around with robes on, dressed up. So you can absolutely oh get God. your robe and you can buy them there. Okay. So all is good. Mm, um, love a robe. Got, yeah, exactly. Who, Who doesn't? doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> no. <laughs> you can come on our family on a day next time, Rubbish. And you can build a lightsaber at Savvy's Workshop. Okay. And also you've got blue milk to try. Blue or green. Mm. The kids like to get both and just have a little yeah. <laughs> thing of who's... And you can go to milk. Ogre's Cantina. There's loads to do oh, over man. in Hollywood Studios. And you do turn into a kid because Stuart Becker will be walking past and you'll be trying to get into his yeah, yeah. Like, sight line a little bit. Yeah. The opposite of the polar bear where you're trying to get out of his yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be walking in the all, way. all thirsty for some attention from a Wookiee. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, and also in Hollywood Studios, you've got loads going on because you've got Toy Story Land with Slinky Dog Dash. Yeah. And you've got uh, Toy Story Mania, which is loads of fun. Uh, and because on uh, on your Dream Disney Day, only on this podcast and with your Dream Disney Day do we have this, but we have Blink Travel. Okay. So now we've blinked and we're in Animal Kingdom. And we're going to Pandora. Do you love Avatar? Yeah, of course I love Avatar. I mean, I often paint myself blue just for... Just for... Just for fun. Fun, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Well, there's loads going on there as well. Um, and uh, Flight of Passage is okay. possibly... Well, actually, I'm going to talk about a different ride that is the best ride ever that I know you'll love. But Flight of Passage is the best ride there. And while we're in Disney's Animal Kingdom, we're going to have some lunch because we're getting hungry now. Uh, so we're going to go to Satulu Canteen in Pandora, the world of Avatar, where the food is inspired by Pandora's bounty. And they do a really good chilli spiced crispy tofu bowl. How about that? That's all my favourite words. It, it, all of them? Yeah. That's why it was made for you. Oh, thank you. Uh, obviously, we're going to blink again. We're going to go to Magic Kingdom because I feel like if you're going to Walt Disney World, you have to be swept up by all the the magic that we would have had as kids. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's a different kind of vibe. Um, so you've got Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, which when you're when you're going past that, you'll hear loads of people screaming, uh, okay. and you'll be like, "Oh, what are they? What are they?" Is it uh, scary? It's just fun and silly because you've got your own little carriage, if you like, that's rocking as you're going around. Right. So it's good fun. And you've okay. got all the different mountains like Big Thunder Mountain, Space Mountain, yeah. um, uh, which are just uh, great fun. And character meets and greets. Um, and a Mickey pretzel I think we're going to have as a snack. Okay. Okay. Uh, with Dole Whip, uh, which is naturally vegan. There's no dairy in that. There we go. Wow, God, this is such a dream day. We're going to do everything. But next, I'm going to take you on my favourite thing ever in Walt Disney World. So we're going to Blink and we're going to go to Epcot. You're going to love it. 
Uh, we are going uh, to Gardens of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Have you heard about this? I, I, I have. I have heard tell of this. Right now, what I'm going to tell you now is okay. because I because friends of mine have done it. Yeah. And they know that I'm going. Yeah. They've told me that this is the one I've got to look at. So, what? This is incredible, right? It is the best ride I have ever been on. In your life? In my life. The best experience ever. That's the best experience ever? Yes. Yeah, I come off every time with the biggest grin. And then when I'm speaking to other people around the park, you can't help but go, oh yeah, what song did you get? Because there's six different songs. Uh, It's So we had, the first time I ever did it, we had uh, Tears for Fears, Everyone Wants to Rule the World. So you want to literally... what is it? So first of all, there's loads that happens before you even get on the ride. Right. Like, so you'll have, like, other characters going close is there, like, telling you what your story is. You get fully into the world. Yeah. Then you get onto the actual ride, and it's like a train, but basically everything runs on its own. So you're not just facing forwards. You might go sideways. You might go backwards. And then the music starts, and it just you just are on this amazing... Um, it's so thrilling and it's just the most well, like it's just life affirming in a really weird way that you wouldn't think a ride could make you feel that mm-hmm. way well I'm a big Guardians fan so I think you're going to love it I think so too uh, thank you for planning this day for me by the way well you know I've not I've not taken you to the water parks because we're going to skip those today just because okay. we've already done four parks so okay fine uh, but we're also going to um, one of my favourite restaurants also in Epcot okay Teppanido is the Japanese restaurant okay, uh, and it's brilliant because everything gets made in front of you um, and uh, that is worth... It's great if you've got trust issues. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see exactly what you're Are you rubbing to? my vegetables with meat? You know, that's what you want to know at all times. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's loads of options for vegans and vegetarians oh. as well. And it's nice. It's just nice, nice being like seeing your food prepared. Yeah, you. yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. Well, I like it anyway. Yeah. Uh, and then the fireworks in the evening. Uh, so let's stay for those. We can grab another snack. Uh, and just hang out together and see all the fireworks. It's always so magical. Thank you. That's great. That sounds yeah. like a wonderful day. Um, all right. We're on to the next game. Okay. It's very serious. Uh, this is the Lightning McQueen quick fire round. I'm going to give you two options of different things, okay. and you're going to say which one you prefer. Okay, fine. You, it's quite... How many of these are there? Is it timed? What's the deal? It's not no, sorry, timed. but it's you said it's serious. 10. Okay, fine. It's not really serious. Okay, right. fine. You, 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 I just started. <laughs> Darth Vader or Iron Man? Oh See, God. it's serious. See, we we laugh, we jest, but actually, oh, I'm gonna go Darth Vader. But I, listen, I, I love Iron, Iron Man. Just died inside, didn't I? He? Know. Just, I know. I love Iron Man. When you see him, when you're in when Walt Disney World, you're gonna have that guilt with you. Well, I'll check if he's listening to the podcast. <laughs> okay, Mickey Waffle or Doll Whip? Mickey Waffle. Thrill Ride or Character Meet and Greet? Oh, Thrill Ride. Unless it's a stormtrooper. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> I've got to say, actually, my kids meeting Kylo Ren is one of my favourite <clears throat> moments ever because <clears throat> they, they really are kind of like... Oh, man. Okay. Uh, you went Character through. meet and ride. <laughs> character, join the two together. <laughs> I'll meet the character what I do is and I'll I'm take gonna, them on a ride. I'm going to meet a stormtrooper. <laughs> We're going to be like, really get on. Okay. And then I'm going to go, listen, man. I'm going on this ride. I, I know it's early on. Do you fancy? <laughs> okay. And then, yeah. um, I'm going to I'm I'm give you I'm that. That's what I'm going for. All right. Uh, poncho on water rides or get soaked? Get soaked. Planner or play by ear? I'm play by ear, married to a planner. Which is the best, best way to be. <laughs> uh, Tower of Terror or It's a Small World? Have you, did you do It's a Small World? Yes, I did, okay. yes. Okay, how was this experience? <laughs> <laughs> You loved it, didn't you? Did it fill you with joy? <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> You've done really well. You've done the whole podcast without letting the cynical side come through, and it's coming. It's coming. I loved it. Wish. Right. I loved it, and I loved the song. And did it stay the... in your head? All yeah, day? it did. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I really loved it. Tara, Tara. <laughs> uh, Disney merch or holiday attire. I would try and find a cool bit of merch. You know, like so, like what I I'd try and do is I'd find something a bit like you know something that I've not seen a lot of people rocking. But you know I mean? that you can include like Star Wars t-shirts in that now. I know. I'm probably gonna go. St- I will go Star Wars. Okay. I might right. go full robe, lightsaber in the belt. I think you should. Okay, I'm going to. I want all the pictures. Right, dance with the parade or take pictures. Do you do parades? I don't. I've gone to the Arsenal parade when they won the league one year. Right. This it's is basically different. the same thing. Really. This is different. Yeah. 
<laughs> this is different. But yeah, I do the parade. I like the parades. Okay. Yeah. And are you dancing along to them? Are you taking photos? Am I dancing? Are you waving? Um, I do dance if the kids, you know, if the kids, particularly my youngest, if he starts sort of dancing, yeah, I will dance. You go with it. In collaboration with them. I would never, would I ever instigate a dance? No. <laughs> would anyone say, oh, I started dancing because Ramesh did? <laughs> Nobody's ever said that. Nor will they ever. Until your next trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Thrill seeker or bag holder? Thrill seeker, but sometimes I'm forced into a bag holder oh. just due to circumstances. And okay. I'm willing to do that. Circumstances. Because we've got, bag both holder. got to pitch in because exactly. a marriage is two people working together and, and trying to bring happiness to everyone. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and parks by day or parks at night? I like parks at night, personally. Because of the fireworks? I just think everything looks quite looks cooler, doesn't it? You know, yeah. all lights and all. I like lights. <laughs> Quote of the podcast. <laughs> what like was the lights. most profound thing you think Ramesh said <laughs> across the whole record? <laughs> I like lights. Sound like that guy from Anchorman. Ramesh, thank you so much. It's been an absolute delight to talk through your love of holidays, travel, and then Disney holidays. But it's been fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, for the last time this series, it's time to get our fix of Disney insider knowledge from our resident Disney expert, Jamie. What a whirlwind it's been this series. I know. I'm sad that it's ending. I know. But before you go, before we finish, what have you got for us? I know. Well, first of all... I know, so selfish. I know it's sad, but come on, give me the info. (laughs) (laughs) I was just going to pay you a compliment and say another another perfect Disney day. I'll give you what you want. I'll give you what you want. (laughs) It's not me, Jamie. It's the people. Give the people what they want. (laughs) Okay. Let's talk about some exciting things coming to Disneyland Paris this Mm -hmm. year. Now, I know that you start every Disney holiday with a visit to one particular attraction. Yes, it's a small world. It doesn't feel right if we don't. It needs to end there as well. Um, It's a strong start and a strong finish. I'll give you you. that. I'll give you that. (laughs) Well, I am excited to share that the much-loved attraction, It's a Small World, will reopen this spring after a period of refurbishment. Yes! This family attraction is open to guests of all ages and goes on a wonderful journey around the world celebrating unity to one of the most iconic Disney Park songs, It's a Small World. And did you know, since it was introduced at the 1964 World's Fair in New York, It's a Small World has enchanted more than one billion guests in Disney parks in Anaheim, Orlando, Tokyo, Paris, and Hong Kong. Uh, Is there a new show too? Yes, there is. Because in summer 2023, a brand new show called Pixar, We Belong Together, will come to the Studio Theatre in Walt Disney Studios Park. And during this show, which will combine state-of-the-art stage technology, lighting effects, choreography and iconic songs, guests will take part in a musical adventure alongside their favourite Pixar pals and find out how music and friendship brings us together. Oh, Isn't that sweet? I love that. Sounds amazing. It really does. It sounds like Disneyland Paris is really continuing to uh, like evolve and transform. It really does. And it's just the start of the ongoing transformation of, of Disneyland Paris. Other large-scale projects will come to life soon, including the regal transformation of the Disneyland Hotel. Mm, can't wait. I know, me neither. Mm. I, I love that hotel. And also the transformation of Disney Village. Oh, Additionally, a new Frozen-themed land is under construction at Walt Disney Studios Park as part of an ambitious expansion plan that will also include a stunning lake and unique gardens, each designed around favourite Disney stories. That's incredible. That There's so much going on. There's so much. Disneyland Paris has got so much coming in the future. One last thing. I know that Eurostar are stopping the direct train to Disneyland Paris. So what are the travel options now? Yeah, the direct train from London St Pancras to Mana Valley will stop on the 5th of June 2023. However, Eurostar will continue to still offer high-speed rail travel between London St Pancras and Paris Gardenor, mm-hmm. as well as Mana Valley via Lille. Guests who are looking to book a holiday to Disneyland Paris with Walt Disney Travel Company can continue to enjoy high-speed rail travel with Eurostar via Lille several times a day, while also being able to choose from a large variety of other transport options, including flights from London, Belfast, Bristol, Edinburgh, Glasgow and Manchester. We also have self-drive options via Eurotunnel and P&O ferries, and all of those are available to book at disneyholidays.co.uk. 
Amazing. Yeah. And I, I know there is, I think with the direct service, there is a convenience thing yeah. there. It's so easy for families just to get one train from London straight to the gates of, of Disneyland Paris. Uh, but changing at Paris Gare du Nord or Lille Europe isn't isn't actually that bad. Mm-hmm. You always have plenty of time to transfer between trains. So it's still convenient. It's just slightly longer with a bit of a change. So I wouldn't be concerned that the yeah. direct service don't let it put you off. Disneyland Paris is worth the journey. And lots of people who have done that journey over the years, you know, at times where that service wasn't available anyway. Absolutely. Plenty of people still do it now. Mm-hmm. I've done it plenty of times and, and it's absolutely fine. It's super easy. It's just stepping off of one train on one platform and going to another platform and getting another train. Super convenient and don't let it put you off. Thank you, Jamie. So much to look forward to. Um, Now, one of the things that I love about this podcast is the sharing of tips, magical memories, happy times that all started at a time of restricted travel. We've heard from our Disney insiders, Elkie and Jamie, and so many friends along the way. But what we've been missing is the stories from you at home, the thousands of listeners, the Disney fans. So to celebrate a very special milestone of 100 years of Disney, we'll be chatting to some very special Disney fans in a Series 3 special coming soon. And with that, we're nearly at the end of the third series of Journey to the Magic. A huge thanks to Ramesh Ranganathan and also to Jamie for giving us so many tips and tricks along the way. If you're a regular listener, you know we love a bonus episode, so tune in next week where I'll bring you a roundup of this series' best bits. And don't forget to tune in to our special episode to celebrate 100 years of Disney, featuring, well, the best guests I could ask for, our Disney fan listeners. <laughs> <laughs>